Hello guys, Andy Rafael here from eTechnics.com and uh, this is just um, sort of a review. We're going to look at uh, a product, obviously, and uh, we're also going to show you sort of some real world benchmarks as well and also how loud it is. And we can only be talking about one of the greatest products that was released this year, the AMD Radeon 6990. This big, beefy son of a bitch here. As you can see, first glance, it's absolutely huge. Um, this is a reference based card so it didn't come with any packaging but expect when you get the packaging to be about the size of a small house. Um, just to house the sheer size of this. I mean it's absolutely huge. Just sort of putting my hand up against it you can see the, the thing's huge. So AMD reference design, is that a good idea? We don't think so. Purely because of the fan used, they stuck with this horrible fan design and it can get so loud, so, so noisy and you will actually hear later on when we, uh, once we put it into our test rig, run it on here, you'll see, well, you'll hear exactly how loud it is. So it's an AMD reference design, straight away you can see it's absolutely flipping huge, um, just in length. So before you go out and buy one of these, just check the measurements, make sure that it's going to fit into your case. We're quite lucky that we're using a test rig, so... Uh, you know, it's, it's open plan, so we've not really got any problems there in regards to um, the sort of you know limiting factor of size and space. So um, it's got just a black design on it, and it's got the Radeon Graphics AMD branded fan in the middle, which is uh, it's got a vapor chamber design. It pushes the air through and exhausts out the back. Simple. What we've seen on the 6950, 6970, apart from the fan, has been sort of situated up here instead of down here on some of them cards. Looking at the back. First thing you notice that's different from any other graphics cards such as the 6950 and 6970 is there's two clamps because there's two GPUs on this graphics card. So two graphics card GPUs on here. You can see that it uses, as we expect, PCI Express interface and it has got a few little features that you wouldn't really see on other cards. Uh, the 69 series have got the dual BIOS, this one has as well and it comes with this lovely yellow warning sticker as well which tells us caution read owner's manual before removing but it doesn't come with an owner's manual because this is a review sample but it does give you the website address http www.amd.com 6990 support so that will give you some information on this so have a read up on that this is one of these cards that you can't just go out and buy and think I'm just going to plug it in off I go because there, there are some unique features of it you really need to look up um, exactly you know what it's got to see if it is going to be the card for you because there's no point especially wasting 450 to 500 pound on something like this when you could quite easily go out and buy two 6950s possibly unlock them into 6970s and still get some uh, some fantastic results so maybe that's the way to go it's entirely up to you but you will see all our benchmarks on eTechnics.com we've already reviewed the Sapphire version of this card and that gave some amazing benchmarks so be sure to go over to eTechnics.com, have a look at that and see what you think and then you can compare it to obviously Crossfire results of 26950s and things like that that uh, you can find reviews of on the internet and on YouTube and sort of see which one's going to be the best for you because spending out loads of money isn't always better but sometimes saving money isn't always better so it really depends on what you're using the card for and what you're hoping to gain from it. So carrying on with the whole design of it and everything we can see Power wise, this is a stupidly powerful card and it does require two, see it, two 8 pin PCI Express connectors. So, um, we do advise if you are going to run one of these graphics cards, make sure that you've got a power supply that's able to cater for it. Uh, behind us, we are using quite an old power supply, it's made by BFG. If anyone remembers BFG, leading manufacturer of uh, graphics cards back in the day, but they did also make power supplies and bloody good ones as well. So we're using a BFG 1200 watt power supply, uh, part of the EX series, and so far to this date, fingers crossed, touch wood, it's, it's still running absolutely fine. Uh, we have got other power supplies, Thermal Tech Tough Power 1200 watt that we can test it with, but this is more than enough. If you are going to run one of these, then I'd say, I'd say to play it safe really, get sort of a 750 watt upwards. Ideally, aim towards a sort of kilowatt. It's not needed, but it is going to, especially if you go for a, a reliable brand like Thermal Take or Cooler Master, someone like that, you are going to get some sort of, you know, some nice clean power, stable uh, power with some stable rails, which is what this graphics card really, really needs to keep it going, especially uh, when, you're, when you're playing some extreme gaming. 
So, what other little features have we got? It's got this lovely red design down there, and it actually reminds me of sort of the Asus colours, the black and the red, but it's not, it's AMD. Asus stole the idea off them. So, underneath this little yellow sticker, we have a little switch. So, if I just bring this in close, you can see that there's a little switch in there, and that's for changing the BIOS over because there is a dual BIOS on here, so you can overclock one, flash it, do what you want to it. If you screw it up, you can just revert back to the other one, no problem at all. Now, for the stupidly, stupidly, ridiculously rich people out there, there's a Crossfire connector. Now, Crossfire has always um, been a technology that everyone's really favoured, especially with AMD and their Crossfire. The scaling is absolutely brilliant. When you look at it in comparison to NVIDIA SLI, I actually prefer the capabilities of Crossfire through AMD instead of SLI through NVIDIA. Now, what it basically means is you can get one of these graphics cards, cha-ching, then get another one and put it in side by side, ching, and uh, having no money left in your pocket. So that's pretty much it. Um, well, not really. You will have no money left unless you are, like I said, stupidly, 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 ridiculously, stupidly rich, because you're paying the best part of a thousand pound for two sixty-nine nineties. But it will give you some fantastic results. I mean, we get results in the sort of you know, 100 frames per second marker on some of the benchmarks that we do. Batman Arkham Asylum, I think we were getting like 160 frames out of this bad boy. If you're gonna put two in there, you're gonna get sort of well over 200 frames per second uh, in certain games and certain benchmarks. So yes, it's fantastic, but is it needed? Really don't think so. Um, it's entirely up to you though. If you are gonna go for it, then yes, you have got more money than cents, but it does give you certain bragging rights to your friends that you know, you've got two of AMD's fastest graphics card on the market. So, other than that, it has got a really cool design underneath the uh, casing. And if you go over to etechnics.com, if you're not already watching this video there, if you're watching this on YouTube or some other site who's embedded our video in, thank you very much, um, you will see that we've actually taken this graphics card apart and you can see you know, how, how things look underneath. You can get a clear view of the two cores, which, which we're taking pictures of, and so forth. The main thing that you're really going to want to know about this graphics card is sort of how it clocks maybe. There's a lot of overclockers out there. I will tell you, with this graphics card, we managed to get it up from the stock 830 MHz on the core clock to 910, which is quite good, but the Sapphire card that we looked at, Sapphire 6990, actually did better than that, if I remember rightly. I think we got it up to about 940. Uh, Memory-wise though, fantastic results. Um, 1250 MHz on the stock memory clock. On the Sapphire one, I believe we got up to about 1480. On this, we got it past 1500. I think we actually got this to 1540 megahertz. So when you actually look at the sort of GDDR5 effective, that is stupidly high. Um, that is really, really good results. The other thing that you're going to want to know about this is the connectors on there. So taking a look, you can see that we have a DVI connector here, and we also have four mini DisplayPort connectors and the Sapphire card that we looked at is very, very similar. And Sapphire actually makes some accessories for their graphics cards, um, so if you have got or are buying one of these and you need to input various different um, connections, head over to Sapphire and you can have a look at their accessories because they actually do the mini display port to DVI, active and a, a normal sort of passive one, um, if you will. They also do sort of the mini display port to display port, mini display port to uh, HDMI and so forth. There's so many uh, adapters out there for this that you'd be able to cater for whatever uh, your monitor actually supports. So hopefully that gives you a, an idea as to what this graphics card is all about, how big it is, how chunky it is, um, whether it will fit in your case or not. But the best thing for you to do is look at what we're going to uh, do next. We're actually going to install this graphics card into our Crosshair 4 Formula AM3 motherboard test rig and we're going to run uh, Heaven. We're going to show you how noisy the fan can get. Uh, but your best bet really, if you're not watching this on etechnics.com, head over, the uh, link is actually in the description just below this video if you're watching this on YouTube, and uh, head over to there where you can see all the benchmarks in, you know, uh, and see how it actually compares to other graphics cards on the market. We'll show you exactly how it overclocked, and you can see exactly what we thought on the graphics card, whether we'd buy it or not, what the pros and cons are, and so forth. So, uh, hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll have a look at that on etechnics.com, but for now, Take a look at what we're doing over here.
So what we thought that we'd do is, we've already reviewed a 6990 in the past from Sapphire and if you are on YouTube you can actually watch a little video that we did. If not, head over to etechnics.com, there's a full written review on there including the video as well. But there is one thing that we didn't really do and that was show you how noisy this card can get. At the moment the card's just sitting idle on our Crosshair 4 formula, AM3 motherboard. Uh, the only other thing sort of fan really, you've got one in the power supply which doesn't really generate a lot of noise and then you've got the CPU cooler. Um, if I just sort of stop talking for five seconds you can hear how loud it is. So as you can hear, nothing really too extravagant. But um, what happens when you put a little bit of load onto the graphics card? I'm not talking about mass amounts of load, I'm talking about a little bit. I mean, at the moment we're sitting here on a comfortable GPU temperature of 52, 53 degrees, and that's using GPU Z. If we're actually going to Catalyst, just like all sorts of software out there, it does uh, give you various different temperatures, uh, but Catalyst is actually showing the same, 53 degrees. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that. 53 degrees and the fan speed is at 28% so not a mass amount but what we're actually going to do is we're going to run heaven AF on 16, AA on 8 and we're going to run that and hopefully you should be able to hear exactly how noisy this graphics card gets above me I know it's all well and good a lot of people say well you know graphics cards they do get you know a little bit noisy but there's a difference in my book um, between a little bit noisy and very noisy so if we start the benchmark on this I'm also going to sort of show you what sort of frames that you can get with this card in heaven uh, because we do do a written review and we show you all the benchmarks there but I'm guessing a lot of you on YouTube want to see exactly you know how the graphic detail and everything looks so straight away I can hear the fans getting a little bit noisier nothing too extravagant yet but just give it a minute a little bit noisier still and we're getting 63 frames per second so uh, just have a little listen So still it's remaining quite settled but at a slightly faster RPM than, uh, than it was at idle. And we're getting average frames of 67.6 frames per second in heaven. And this is, uh, as we said, with AA on 8 and AF on 16. Other than that, everything else is on default. You can hear it ramping up a gear again because obviously the temperature is getting hotter. The fan's controlling its speed to keep the temperatures down. And I feel like I'm actually speaking a little bit louder now to compensate so you can hear me over the fan. So hopefully you can still hear me. I am speaking a little bit louder than I was at the start of this video. And that's purely because I've got this right in my ear behind me. So it does sound very loud to me. Um, until I actually check back on the footage, I may actually be shouting at you right now. But I very much doubt that because you're probably hearing this fan uh, quite loud as well. The camcorder we're using is really good at picking up um, sort of you know low level noise and noise that's uh, a little bit more distant. So we're still getting sort of 64, 65 frames per second. So still some really, really good results from heaven, especially using settings AA on 8 and AF on 16. I mean, generally when we do run our tests, we run uh, AF on 16 and AA on 4 uh, on most of the sort of games and, uh, and benchmarks that we use. So uh, this time though we're using 8. And you can see the graphic detail, second to none on 6990. So we are coming towards the end of the uh, of the tests for heaven. We're on stage 20 of 26 now. 
So it's just going through various other parts of the technology behind this benchmark, including the volumetric lighting, tessellation. And the graphics card hasn't really got much noisier. Um, as soon as it has got up to that, that sort of loud noise level, um, it, it does sort of remain there all the way through. Obviously, it does sound a lot louder now because it's in an open test bench. If it's inside a case, it is going to be a little bit quieter. Once again, though, it has ramped up a little bit now. It's got a little bit louder, and you probably just heard that suddenly rise up a level. Really, really getting loud now. As we come towards the end of the test. And that's the test just about finished and it is extremely loud in my ear now. And as you can see, frames, if we zoom in, you can see we're getting 67.7, the score, 1706. We had a minimum frames of 19.5 and a maximum of 124.8. So uh, very, very good results there. This is using the Phenom uh, 2x61100T hex core processor, 4 gig of Kingston um, DDR3 HyperX 1800, the Radeon 6990, and uh, some really, really good results there. I'm just going to come out of heaven now because even though it does sound very, very loud, you can actually make the fan go a little bit louder using the Catalyst Control Center. So at the moment we're still getting sort of 53 degrees in GPU-Z but 67 in Catalyst so there is a slight variance between the two and it's getting a little bit quieter again, fans running at 39%. What I'm going to do though is enable the manual fan control and stick it up to 100 and uh, just listen because obviously if you're overclocking and uh, you want to keep things cool you may actually be sort of tinkering with some of these settings in the AMD overdrive of the Catalyst control centre. So from 33% up to 100, have a listen. Now I really, really am happy to shout. You can hear that. Uh... You can hear that it's extremely loud. <coughs> Actually, sounds like it's going to take off. And it's got quite a distinct whine to it as well at that, at that sort of speed. You can hear that it's not just the noise of pushing out air, which is pushing out a lot of air exhausting out the back and a little bit out of the front as well. You can hear that it's got that sort of whooshing noise pushing the air out but also a very distinct whine. There it is. As it's sort of slowing down. You can hear that whining noise, we're now at 57 and it's becoming a little bit more bearable. Still very, very loud though. And you've got to think, if you're playing a game or doing some benchmarks or something like that, something that's quite intensive, even Photoshop is going to sort of, you know, ramp up the temperature just that little bit, which is then going to kick the fan into a sort of, you know, a higher state of, uh, of revs. So now we're at 38, that's actually quite bearable, 38%. And this will go down a little bit more. It's still a, a very distinct whine, but hopefully it's given you an idea as to how loud this graphics card is. And uh, hopefully, as time sort of goes on, we will see more sort of custom cooler designs with better cooling than uh, than the stock reference design because it's very noisy and can be very annoying, in my opinion. Hopefully, it's given you a, an overall idea of the 6990, the technology behind it and what it's like on a sort of day to day basis. So before you do spend £450-£500 on a graphics card like this, just uh, sort of weigh up the pros and cons of, yes it is the fastest, you know, one of the fastest graphics cards on the market, dual GPU, and the fastest graphics card from AMD at the moment, but it is very noisy, it is very expensive, so please just weigh up the pros and cons, and, uh, and sort of take it from there really.